topic of of this tutorial video is api testing api testing in uft or in qtp that is the topic of this tutorial video welcome to this tutorial video topic of this tutorial video is api testing that is what i will be explaining so i will i will be explaining uh, or i will give the demonstration on this below topics what is api what is api call what is api endpoint and i will uh, give example how we can use an api as a end user not as a tester or not as a developer as an end user how we can give uh, how we can use an api and i will use hp flight api sample application when i install qtp or uft a sample api application is also installed uh, that sample api i will be using to demonstrate this tutorial video and i will also show what is api testing how we can do manual testing using uft and how can we automate that uh, manual test case with parameterization these are the things in this tutorial video that i will cover so first thing is what is what is an api what is an api api is an interface api is an interface api is an interface so there are different types of interfaces one is called command line interface one is called command line interface so for example this is a command line interface where i can write command so this is a command line interface another example This is another example, command line interface, a interface where I can write command. And another example would be this is another example where I can write command. So these are command line, these are uh, command line interfaces. This is one uh, interface, another interface. graphical user interface graphical user interface so graphical inter user interface would be if i open google chrome browser and this uh, this page is loaded this page is a graphical user interface or i open something i i use a start menu and open something maybe open no paint maybe paint i open uh, paint so this is also graphical user interface and now comes application programming interface application programming interface application programming interface application programming interface so if i go to this api api means application programming interface a for application p for programming i for interface so this is an interface that i cannot install in my computer command line interface and graphical user interface these two interfaces i can install i can see i can uh, enter some data i can do many things 
with these two interfaces but when it comes to application programming interface this interface i cannot install in my computer so it is not installable i cannot see but i can only interact with it i can only communicate with it i can say hey interface give me this or hey interface do this for me and then interface will do that for me so i give i have given a name to interface that is called uh, invisible robot a robot which is not invisible i have given the name this is not uh, in the book or anywhere i just give this name that is invisible robot a robot which is invisible so this interface is invisible interface i cannot install in my computer i cannot uh, see i can only interact with it means i can uh, tell api that hey api do this for me and api will will do that for me or hey api give me that data api will give me that data so api is kind of invisible robot i can also uh, call that uh, representative or security personnel so for example facebook let's say facebook a company facebook has database systems uh, app uh, app server database server there are many things in their system they they also may offer an api an api means an individual uh, invisible robot where we can communicate we can uh, communicate via xml or json json format so these are xml format extensible markup language format most of the api most of the api means most of the invisible robot takes xml for communication i can send request to api in xml format some uh, api also take json format so that is api api is so definition is an api is an interface that allows one software application to interact with another one that is the definition i have given a, a name that is invisible robot uh, which we do not see we cannot install in my computer i can only talk or communicate via letters and the letters or request should be done either in xml format or json format so that is api so that is api in very high level now so i have explained what is api and now what is api call api call what is api call so an api call is when a client 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 like an app or website so what is client client could be an app or could be a website for example for app uft 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 it's a it can behave as client or soap ui soap ui it can behave as app there are many apps uh, we can use so that is app or website website means let's say i open microsoft edge browser and load some particular pages in it so that that would be called websites for example postman 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 is a website uh, postman has website version where we can open browser load a particular web pages and use those pages to communicate with that invisible robot means which we can communicate with api we can uh, tell api to hey api do this for me 
an API, API will do that for me and at the end it, API will tell me that I have completed this uh, or I couldn't complete because of this is this. So API, I, I will be sending request to the API and send uh, API will give me response and all communication will happen in XML format or JSON format. All APIs takes XML formats. Some API also take a JSON format. So I'm going to the definition of API call. So an API call is when a client, I have mentioned what is client. Client could be UFT or QTP or client could be SOAP UI or those are uh, client or client could be postman. So like an app or website makes a request to an API. So API is something representative, I told you, representative or uh, security personnel. If, for example, let's say Facebook. Facebook has a, a server architectures, but I do not know how many uh, app server Facebook has, how many database server Facebook has. What I know that Facebook has a representative who represents all the databases, all the servers, and we, as a end user do not have access to Facebook uh, databases, Facebook app servers. We can only make a request to the API, means to the representative or the invisible uh, robot. We can say, hey API, give me that data. Or hey API, please enter some uh, data in that particular database. Or hey API, create an account for me. Or hey API, uh, tell me this. Uh, so I can make a request to an API. So to access data, to access data means uh, in the in the database there will be many tables, many data. I can uh, tell, hey API, give me some that particular data. An API will give me that data. So that is accessing the data or accessing functionality means there will be there will be many functionalities that could have. Uh, a functionality that I will send some data and I will tell API, hey API, create an account for me. Uh, this is my first name, last name, phone number, email address, and all the number, all the data. Please take this data and create an account for me. Uh, I can send a request saying API, hey API, take this data and create an account for me. And the uh, API will create an account and in response, API will say, I have created an account. This is your user ID and password. Go ahead and use this user ID and password. So that is uh, accessing functionality. I can tell API to do something, uh, and API, API will do something for me on behalf of me, and then in the response, it will give the result. So that's what it means. So it includes, it, it includes sending requests to API, means I am telling API to do something, and making the API perform task means I can tell API that, hey, API, create an account for me. Take this data and create an account for me. So API will create an account and in response, it will say success or it will say, I have uh, created the account. Please, this is your user ID and password. Go ahead and use it. Uh, or some uh, some other response saying that I couldn't create the account because uh, this, this is the issues. So that is uh, making the API perform some tasks. And then receiving response means API will give the response. So all these three things together becomes a API call. An API call means I will be sending a request to API. API is the invisible robot. I will send a request to that API uh, to get some data or to perform some uh, functionalities. And API, API will do that and give response. And all these three, all these three means sending a request to API, making the API some task if applicable. Not all uh, request, uh, all API call uh, will have this part. So if applicable, and then receiving the response from the API. And this communication happen in XML or JSON format. Uh, in XML or JSON format, all API, all API, all all API 
takes XML, XML format, all the invisible robot takes uh, API. Yeah, I mean all these all the invisible reports means all the APIs whether it is Facebook is off offering an API or LinkedIn is offering an API or uh, Bank of uh, England is offering an API all API API takes XML format some real APIs also take JSON format whether uh, I do not know whether after the API taking the JSON data, they convert to XML and then work on it or not. I do not know. But some, what I know that some API takes uh, JSON data as well. So that is API call. API, and the definition is an, an API call is when a client like an app or a website makes a request to an API to access data or functionality in a server. It includes sending a request to API, making the API perform a task if applicable, and receiving a response from the API. All these three tasks together called an API call. Now that is also I have explained. These are prerequisites. Before I go to API testing, we need to understand these basics. Uh, so I have explained this one also. What is API call? And what is API endpoint? What is API endpoint? What is API endpoint or what is web service endpoint? So a web service endpoint is a specific URL. URL. So what is URL? URL means when I open browser, when I open browser and write like www facebook.com then the facebook page opens this this is url whatever i typed in that is uh, address that is url this this starts with http s or http so this is an url so a web service endpoint is a specific URL where web services can be accessed by clients. I mentioned what is client. Client means uh, UFT or SOAP UI or Postman or REST API. There are many uh, API or web service testing tools. Those can be those tools as well as uh, there are many company can use interface where we can uh, prepare the XML files and send the request. So those are called clients. The interface where I prepare the XML files and then uh, use that interface to send requests to the API, those are called clients. For example, QTP, UFT, SOAP, UI, uh, and then um, so REST API, Postman, there are many um, testing tools. They also behaves as a client so this is a web service endpoint for example web service endpoint example so i have opened in a virtual machine in this virtual machine i have uft installed unified functional testing installed uft installed so when i installed uft UFT also offered one API. So when I install UFT, this particular API also, this particular client also installed. This is not API, this is a client. A API client. Now this is an interface where I can see. This is an interface where I can see the endpoints. This is not the API. This is not the API. API means application programming interface, which is an invisible robot, which I do not see. But this one, this one is an interface where I can see the URLs. I, ran, I clicked it and now I can see that HTTP clone slash, clone slash, this is the URL, this is the URL. So it says links to service endpoint so these are the endpoints so this is one endpoint this is another endpoint there are two urls here so so there are two endpoints 
it says uh, the hp flight service application is running available comments it's there so so this is the this is your one and two and to practice the reason uft this the reason uft offers this feature with uft so that we can practice api testing so now we know what is your a, a, a what is endpoint endpoint are nothing but url there are two urls one is called one is for soap other one is for rest SOAP means simple object access protocol, REST means representational state transfer protocol. Uh, this URL, the URL belongs to SOAP, is also known as uh, WSDL or WSDL URL. There are this same uh, API endpoint, API endpoint that belongs to SOAP a protocol that has more names. Some people call call WSDL, some people call WSDL uh, URL, but basically it is an uh, API endpoint belongs to SOAP, SOAP protocol. So now we know what is uh, endpoint. Endpoint is nothing but URL, uh, which can be used to load all the web services methods. Now I will use I will use an API. So the API I will be using that is the sample API that uh, comes with uh, QTP or UFT or UFT one. Whether I install UFT one or I install QTP or I install UFT, whenever I install these tools, this sample API comes. Uh, the reason UFT gives the sample API to us um, because we as a tester, we as a tester can practice uh, API testing. So now before me, before I go to the testing part, I need to show how we can use a QTP or UFT to access API. To access API. To send request to API, to communicate with the API, to interact with the API. So as a user, uh, first I will show as a user how we can uh, use UFT as client. UFT is now treating as client. UFT is uh, behaving as a client for now. In the later, I will explain how EFT can behave as manual testing and then also can automation testing. This I will explain uh, later. For now, I will be showing uh, as a user. First, I will open EFT. Now I will run that uh, this thing. Opening this one means the invisible robot. The name I have given invisible robot means the API that belongs to UFT. That API is up and running now. Now I will open a new API test. I can click here or I can go here new and uh, test or I can also go from here new test. So I'll be opening from here. So I'm clicking on new test and in this list I will choose API test. UFT test is opening. Now I will be using UFT API test 
as client to interact with API. So when I create the API test, I can see Solution Explorer. I, I can also see Toolbar. If I click on Solu Solution Explorer, I can see the uh, solution. I can see the structure. Now, if I go to the Toolbar, I can see these things, the local activities empty, these are empty. This has some uh, things. So now I will be loading HTTP, HTTPS methods. Uh, of this particular API or this particular or the invisible robot or the API which is called HP Flight API. I have given the name here. Name is H HP Flight API. That is the name. So I will be importing from WSDL. In this tutorial, I will only show SOAP uh, protocol or SOAP uh, simple object access protocol that approach this one, this one. So I'm clicking on uh, import and here I, I will have to type this entire path. This is the path. HTTP clone slash slash local host to clone 24240 slash HP flights underscore soap question WSDL. The same thing is written here. WSDL. So I will have to uh, copy from this line or I have to read uh, from this line. I have to read this line and write here. Uh, so I'm writing this URL or API endpoint or WSDL here. And now I'll be clicking on OK. It is importing all the methods. It got imported. If I expand, if I expand, I will see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, HTTP methods. Uh, six uh, methods, six, uh, these are HTTP methods. So these six methods are there, one, two, three, four, five, six. Each method can be used to send a request to API. So as a user, I will be using this one first, get flights, get flights. This is a method, get flights is a method. If I Click here, it says execute the get flights web service operation. Now, if I move it or drag and drop into this test, it comes in the test. Now, if I, right now I clicked here, I clicked here, so this, this color, this is selected, get flights is selected. If I click here, then the flow is selected. If I click here, the test is selected. So I will be clicking here so that this particular method is selected. Now, these are the corresponding information about this method. This method, if I click here text, this is the XML file. This is the XML file. Control C, copy. I copy from here and I am pasting in a notepad just for us to understand. This is the XML file. If I run right now, if I run the script right now, then this, this information will be sent to API. This information will be sent to API. Send a, now this is, this information is not enough. The information is here. The information in this particular XML file is not enough. I need more information, so or more input data. So I will be putting departure city. I will choose a city, let's say London, and I will choose another city, maybe Los Angeles. Now I have selected two cities. If I go here, I will see those those informations are also inserted here. This London is London. There is a new tag. A new element added 
This is a new element. This is a new element. The XML file, new element edit. I copy everything. Control C, con uh, Control A. So selected everything. Control C, copied everything. Now I will put in the notepad. Control V, paste it here. So now I can see here. This is. This is a. This is an element. It has a start tag, end tag, and context. So there are two elements has been added. This is one element, and this is another element. This is another element. Now, if I run this as a user, I when I run the script, that means I'm telling API that hey API, I want to take a flight from London and I want to go Los Angeles. Please tell me how many flights are available in this two location. That is what if I am sending a plain text, then I would uh, tell like this: Hey API. I want to take a flight from London to Los Angeles. Please tell me how many flights goes uh, in this location or in this route. But uh, I'm not telling API in English. I'm telling API in XML format. So I'm when API API doesn't know I am using UFT or SOAP UI or Postman. API doesn't know. When API receive a response, the API gets this only, this uh, data only, this uh, this XML file only. So whether I'm using UFT or SOAP UI or REST protocol, doesn't matter. Right now I am explaining as an end user, as a end user, not as a tester. Uh, so as an end user, when I send this request, so this xml file api will get now i will be running it i will be running it uh, okay so i'm running it a script is running a script will send request to api and api will respond now, script execution ended. If I expand everything, then I will see this particular method I executed. This is a method get flights HTTP HTTPS method. And if I scroll down, I will see this is the request I sent. This is the response I received. This request I, I can uh, see here. I can also uh, this response I can see here to to see the response here I have to use this uh, scroll bar from left to right and I also have to use this vertical uh, scroll bar from top to bottom but if I click here it will open this response in the default browser whatever the browser is set to default uh, in this particular computer uh, there it will open so i'm clicking first i will see what response has been sent to the api i'm clicking here and it says this is the data has been uh, sent to api now when api receives this data in real time if i am using if i am sending an uh, in real time if i am sending a request to facebook Facebook API, then Facebook API will receive this data. Facebook will not know whether I used UFT to send or SOAP UI to send or Postman to send what to what tool I used to send. Facebook will not know. Facebook will know that they have uh, received a letter. Envelope uh, means a letter. They have received a letter or they have received a request. And these are the data in the request. So I and uh, this has a name get flights name now it will give the response now this uh, this that is for a uh, real time uh, for this particular scenario right now i'm using api my flight sample application this is the request sample application received 
Now sample application will give me response and I will see the response. Response, I, I can click here, click here. And I can see this is the response I've been given. That uh, from uh, these two locations, from London to Los Angeles, in these two, in this route, there are so many flights. Different airlines is ha different airlines has flights in these two airports. Airports in uh, airports in uh, London and airports in Los Angeles. From these two locations, there are so many flights. There are so many flights. So I'm copying everything as I'm right now. Right now I'm using as a user. So I copy everything. Select first Control C. Close the browser. I will be putting in the notepad. Control A, Control V. So it got pasted in this particular note notepad. Minimize it. I will be closing this uh, result window. I can also right click and run a step. Then also it comes here, and then I can also copy these things from there as well. Now I have used this one. This one is to get information about uh, flight information about two airports or two cities. Now I am deleting. I will be deleting. I will be deleting this method. So I'm deleting this method. It's done. Now I will create. I will create a flight. Create flights. Create a flight order. Create flight order. So I'm dragging and dropping here. And uh, this is the XML file which uh, the API will receive if I run right now. But uh, I have to put some additional information to it. So I will be sending this information. I will say first class, customer name. I wrote my name, MD Shahajada Imran. And then departure date. I'll be choosing, let's say I am choosing a date in the future. In the future, and then flight number. Flight number, there are so many flights that travels in this location, in this route. There are so many flights. So I will be just choosing this one. This is the flight number 19395. One nine three nine five one nine three nine five one nine three nine five and the ticket number I want to buy two tickets. So once I run the script, uh, it means I am sending. If I go to the XML file before I tell that, if I go to the XML file, I will see these informations are added the class tag added and then uh, customer name customer this is the customer name tag added it so this is element element has a start tag end tag and context so these informations are added now if i run the script then it means running this script means i am telling api that hey api these are my, these are the information. These are the information. Create create one flight order for me, and API will create an order for me. And in response, API will tell I have created the order. This is the order number and this is the price. That is what API will do. But this communication not in plain text. It's in XML format. Response also in XML format, uh, request also in XML format. So now I will be running it. I run the script. If I expand everything, and open this particular method. I scroll down. And first I want to see the request. What request I have sent. Click here. This is the request I sent. Uh, the API, the invisible robot. He got this request. 
he got this request. The request is these are the information I have sent, and I told uh, please create uh, one order for me. Create order for me. These are the information I have given. Now, in response, what uh, the API told me. In response, it said the order number 28 and then uh, plane ticket price is 222. So order, uh, he has been, uh, the API booked a flight for me on behalf of me because I made that request. The request I made uh, via XML uh, format. So that is using, so I have given uh, example how we can use this flight and this method and this method as a user, as an end user. And now uh, get flight order. Let me, let me delete all other below information. Let me do one thing. Let me open a new, new notepad. So, I will preserve the information what I have received in the previous uh, API call. Every time I run the script, an API call is Performed API call means sending request, making the API perform some task, and receiving the response. All three together called an API call. So this in the response I have received this. So I copy, copy these things, and I will be saving in a notepad. I saved in a notepad. Order number is twenty eight. Now I will be using this get flight orders, flight order information I want to get. So I dragged and dropped this particular method. Once I, right now this flow is selected, I can see the color, uh, is it uh, orange color, I guess. So the color is selected. Now so I'll, I'll be clicking here. Uh, the orange color came here. The circle has orange color. Means this one is selected. This information is selected. This is create flight order so i do not need this i delete this one and now i will be get flight order this is what i will be using so i am dragging and dropping here and i am saying get flight in orders get flight orders flight information i want to see so right now this uh, xml uh, request uh, is empty i will be adding this information I will say order number, flight details. I will only give order number 28. 28. Uh, 28, order number. Now if I go to this XML file, I will see. I will see this particular tag has been added, uh, particular element has been added with the order tag order number this is the tag name order number this is the extra tag uh, slash order number this is the end tag and the 828 is the uh, value or context so this is the letter that uh, we will send to api when api will receive letter or request uh, api will uh, get this information inside of this envelope Now it means when I run the script, it means I'm telling API that, hey API, order number is 28, please provide information about that order number. So, but that is, uh, that is how I would write if it was plain English, but it is not plain English. It is uh, via XML file. So I will, I will be sending this file. So I'm running it.
the script execution ended we'll expand the result select this method first i will see what request i sent or the api what request the api received this this information i sent this and this data api received now what it responded it responded this is the order information when the order number is 28 uh, this is the information customer name is my name and uh, departure date is here flight number is here uh, ticket uh, count is here and the class also here so this is the information about the particular order so we had a communication with the api i told api to tell me the order information api gave me the order information and everything happened uh, using api call now i will be deleting this particular method i have showed how we can use this method as a end user an update order number update uh, update flight order so i'm dragging this one again now, now this is the letter or this is the request uh, if I run the script, this letter, this letter, the API will receive, or this information will be sent to API. But uh, that's not enough for API to execute. So I will be adding additional information. I will say um, order number is twenty-eight. Order number is twenty-eight, and the customer name I will say lemon. Previously, I, so customer name is Lemon. So it, the previous the name customer name was M D Shahjada Imran, my legal name. Now I will be changing to Lemon, L I M O N Lemon. And let me see if API can uh, do that update for me. I'm telling API that hey API, uh, my order number is twenty eight. Please change uh, my name to Lemon. That is what I'm telling. If it was plain text, that is what I would say. But it is that is not how how I'm saying. I am sending a letter, or I'm sending an XML request. Uh, there, uh, this is the, that is what I'm saying by this request. So now I will be running it. The script is running. Script execution ended. Now if I expand, select this flight. First I will see what uh, request I sent, what letter I have sent. This is the, uh, whatever inside of the envelope, that is a letter whatever inside of the envelope that is a letter so this is the request we sent or uh, this is the request the api the invisible robot he received this letter from us or he received this request from us or the api received this request from us now i will see what the response the api gave us Response is true, means he was able to successfully update the information. Now, I uh, in, in this API call, in this particular API call, I told the API that hey API, change my name from MD Shahjada Imran to Lemon. That is what I told the API, and API did that. A API changed the in the database system api did that uh, modification and in the response uh, api said true that means the name has been changed now i need to check whether it is actually changed or not so i will be using get flights order again so let me delete this and get flight orders get flight orders and i will be saying order number 28 Order number 28, 
the uh, running this uh, script or running this particular uh, method means i'm sending a request to api uh, means i'm telling api that uh, the order number is 28 please provide all information about that order number so it will it should give me the information about the order number i have run the script now i will expand everything select the method and then scroll down here first i will see the request what request i made so this envelope or this letter i have sent to the api and api gave a response this is the response And in the response, I can see name is not MD Shahajida Imran anymore. Name has been changed. So in the previous API call, I told the API that I changed my name from MD Shahajida Imran to Lemon. And the API, in the response, in the previous uh, API calls response, uh, I have seen it is written true. Um, because um, So I have uh, run this particular call saying that when the order number is 28, uh, please provide all the information of this order number. And uh, in this API call, that is what I told uh, API and API gave this information in the response. Now, delete order number, delete order, uh, delete flight order. So I'll be, first I delete this one. Now the order I have created, uh, the, um, the flight order I told API to create and API created for me that flight order number is 28 and I want to delete that. So I'm, uh, I drag and drop this uh, flight order, delete flight order, I drag and drop this particular method and it says order number, order number I will say 28, 28. Now, if I run the script, running the script before run, I said running the script means when I run this script means I'm sending a request to API means I'm telling API that, hey, API, the order number 28, please delete that order number. An API will delete for me in response. It will say something that a delete successful or true, or it will say I couldn't delete because of this issue. Whatever response, whatever is there, the API will give a response. But when I run the script, uh, means I'm sending the request to the API, and then let's see what API response. So I'm running the script. Spend all, delete flight order. First, I will see what request I sent to API. So these are the information is in the request. And what response it is saying. It says a true. True means uh, the API was able to successfully delete the order. And I am deleting this. So I have uh, given a hands-on example how we can uh, use UFT as a client to send request to API or to make API call. Now that uh, I have given hands-on how we can use uh, client, how we can use client to communicate with API, to communicate with the uh, invisible robot, or to communicate with uh, that uh, API, or interact with an API as a end user. So this one I have given hands on. Now what is uh, API testing? Now it comes to API testing. What is API testing? API testing is the process of 
uh, ver verifying and validating functionality, quality, performance, security, reliability of an API system. So API, I, I call API as an invisible robot. So I will be testing that robot, whether that robot is uh, properly working or not. Uh, or the, rep the representative of the company or the security personnel of the company or the machine, the robot. Uh, I'll be testing whether that particular invisible robot or invisible interface can perform tasks uh, according to specified requirements or not. So, again, what is written in the book, uh, the API testing definition? API testing is the process of verifying and validating functionality, quality, performance, security, and, re and uh, reliability of an API system. So that is the API testing. We will be testing all of those. But in this tutorial video, I will only cover functionality. API testing means uh, testing all of those, uh, but in this tutorial video, I will only cover functionality, how we can uh, test the functionality. So I have given what is the definition of API testing. And now I will give hands on example of how we can do manual testing of any two uh, HTTP or HTTPS methods. And I will cover positive, negative, and S cases. So this is what I will give hands on now. So manual testing. So to do manual testing, what are the steps? First, we apply test design techniques to create a scenarios. And then we write test cases. And then we prepare test data. That is uh, normally we do. But in this tutorial video, I will not uh, show those. I will be thinking that we only already know those. And also there is a testing type called exploratory testing, which doesn't even require uh, creation of those documents. Uh, creating test scenario, creating a test plan, you know, creating test scenario, creating test uh, cases, test data. Those, um, I think that I, we know, so I will not be explaining. I will directly go to the execution part. Execution part. So I will do manual testing of any one, any, any two methods. So let's say I will use uh, get flights, uh, get flights at this particular method. I will test this particular method, positive and negative, uh, both cases, positive testing and negative testing, both cases. So let me drag and uh, I'm doing exploratory testing. So I will directly go to the execution part. I'm skipping the uh, test scenario creation, test case creation, test data creation. Uh, I'm directly going to the execution. Now I will do positive testing. Let's say the requirement says, the requirement says, if I give a departure city and arrival city and ask the API to get flight information, API will give me the flight information. That is the requirement. In the, so graphical user interface GUI testing, we have functional requirement in the same way for API testing also, we have functional requirement. Let's say for this particular function or for this particular method, uh, we have a requirement. The requirement is if we give valid, uh, if we give a department uh, city and arrival city, both city, then API will, in the response, API, API will tell me all the flights available in these two cities. So for positive testing, positive testing means I will go with the requirement. That is the requirement. So requirement says I will be giving two valid uh, data into this uh, two fields. So I'm giving a valid data. Let's say Frank, I, I just randomly choose this uh, city. And then I'll be choosing another city, Paris. Now I have chosen th these two uh, cities, one for departure city, other one for arrival city. Now if I run the script, a script will give a response in the response. Uh, if I run the script means I'm making an API call. I'm sending a request to API. API will give me a response and the response, it will show the list of flights that, that are available in these two 
um, cities or in these two airports, I can say technically. So now I will be running it. This is positive testing. I'm going with the requirement. Running it. Now if I expand it and get the flight, first I will see the request, what request I sent in this API call. I sent API that uh, departure city is this, arrival city is this, please tell me the list of flights available in this uh, in these two cities or in this particular uh, path. And in the response, API gave a response saying that uh, API found this list that uh, these are the flights that are available in this in those two cities these are the available flights that are available in those two cities so uh, and uh, in the if it is if it is agile development if it is agile development and then there will be user story, there will be acceptance criteria of the user story. In the acceptance criteria, this information will be written that what I need to check in the response. In the acceptance criteria, I might have a please verify this particular, uh, this particular element is present. In the acceptance criteria of user story, if it is agile development, there will be user history, and each user history will have acceptance criteria. In acceptance criteria, may be written the, this particular uh, tag, not tag. This particular element is written. This element has a start tag, end tag, and bunch of context. Um, in the acceptance criteria, we may have this uh, element saying that in the response, verify this uh, particular element present if it is present the testing passes not present in testing phase so i am assuming this one is written and uh, testing is passing so positive testing passed now i will go to negative testing positive positive testing passed so i have given a uh, hands on example how we do positive testing i you go with the requirement and uh, i go with the acceptance criteria everything uh, is working fine so it passes Positive testing passes. Uh, now I will go with negative testing. Negative testing means going against the requirement. Against the requirement. So I delete this one again. I delete this this uh, method and bringing again. Get flights. Now I will do negative testing. Negative testing means going against to the against the requirement. So I will say. I will say, I will give a arrival city and I will give a departure city, both are same. Arrival city and departure, departure city, both are same. There is no requirement for this particular scenario. Therefore, it is uh, goes under negative testing group. Uh, and both city are same. If I go to here, arrival city, departure, departure city, both are same. Now, if I run the script, I'm telling API that, hey, API, give me the list of flights or uh, list of flights that are available in these two direction, in this uh, path. And let me see what uh, API response. I run the script. And it failed. Now I expand and get here. First, I will see what request I sent. The first request I sent is when both cities are same. Arrival city and departure city both are same. I send the request and ask uh, API to give me a list of flights that goes in this uh, path. Let me see what API says. API says there are no flights that matches your iteration. There are uh, no flights matches 
your attention. Now, uh, there are no flags that matches your attribution. I could create a system change request. I can open a system change, change request in ALM or QC or in uh, Jira. I can open a system change request saying that the error, the message, the response, the error message when the arrival date and departure date are same, the error message is very generic. It should have, uh, you have uh, selected uh, uh, some other text should, uh, I can open a uh, system change request and I can tell that instead of this text, there could have some other text like uh, since arrival city or departure, departure city is same, that means you are in the same uh, city. There is no need to take a plane, take a taxi or take Uber or take Metro or even you can take rickshaw. If you were in the same city, there is no need to take a plan. That kind of uh, message uh, can be, since API is an individual, API is an individual, API could uh, send that. So I can, I, this is not a defect, definitely not a defect. Uh, this is, uh, I can open a system change request. Uh, maybe the management will reject it, but I, this is an opportunity to create system change request. Now, this is one negative testing that I have done. Another negative testing I will do. I delete this one. Now, um, another negative testing I will do. If I, if I run this script, this letter will be sent to API. This letter will send to API. Now I will be choosing, let's say I want to go from Portland to Dhaka, Bangladesh, but Dhaka is not here in this list. Uh, I choose none here and then I go here and I will be choosing Dhaka here. Dhaka. So I'm I am so API when API receive response API gets this XML file only. It doesn't get anything else. And this XML file can be sent from UFT, can be sent from SOAP UI, can be sent from uh, Postman, can be sent from many other applications. So API doesn't know which a uh, client is used to send the request. When API receive uh, this uh, request when API received this letter, it only received this XML file. The XML file I have uh, given uh, departure city as Portland and arrival city as Dhaka. Now I run and see what happens with the response. I'm telling API that, hey API, tell me all the flights which are available uh, from uh, Portland city to Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, let me see what API says. Let me see I'm expanding, getting the info of this particular flight um, of this particular method so this is the request that i sent if i click here i will see what request i sent so this letter whatever inside of the envelope is a letter this letter is sent as part of request to the api an api received this letter uh, or api received this request in the request i mentioned arrival city as dhaka and portland city as uh, no uh, departure city as portland this is the information i sent to api um, now let me see what api responded
it responded an error it responded exception it's called uh, in in programming terms it is called an exception but end user not necessarily not necessarily will know the programming this is a defect this is a defect the reason is the response uh, API gave to me that is not acceptable. That is a that is an exception. That is an error exception. Only the programmers understand this. End user will not understand what it is. There could have uh, the the acceptable uh, masses in the response could have uh, this particular airlines doesn't operate any flight to Dhaka or Dhaka city is out of network or we don't uh, some some text that is understandable by the end users this this response is not understandable by end users it is uh, only understandable by programmers if uh, if python programmer is uh, working on the api then uh, the uh, another python programmer will, will understand if a, a c sharp programmer is working in api another c sharp programmer will understand if a java programmer of api if the uh, api is developed in java programming then another java programmer will understand end users general public will not understand so this is definitely a defect this is not acceptable response. API cannot uh, send me this response. API will send me saying that uh, there is no flight to Dhaka. Or, uh, because uh, API doesn't have any control on the request they receive from uh, end users. Because uh, end users may use UFT, may use SOAP UI, may use REST API, may use uh, Postman, and uh, some other tool may allow to add those uh, Dhaka cities. So, or someone can uh, edit the XML file manually the way I did and send. So anyway, this uh, this is a defect. I will be logging this as a defect in Quality Center or whatever uh, defect tracking tool I will be using. There I will be logging this as a defect that the response is not acceptable. If I choose a city which is out of service or out of network, not out of service, uh, which is uh, out of uh, network uh, or the L out of network, then they should have a masses response that uh, end user can understand for example uh, our uh, airlines doesn't operate any flight to dhaka city or dhaka city is out of uh, 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 service areas something like that something uh, text that is understood by end user so this is a this particular negative testing failed and i will be logging this defect so this is uh, another uh, negative and another negative uh, testing I will do. Mm, that's fine. That's enough. Uh, I have given two examples for negative testing. So I, in positive positive testing, test case passes on that particular testing. On that particular, I am testing only one uh, method. Uh, positive negative positive testing passes negative testing one passes another failed one has a system change request for one testing failed i opened a system change request another testing failed i opened a defect now this is a negative testing that i have given how we can do negative testing now edge case testing edge case testing also known as uh, boundary value analysis testing or uh, boundary testing so now i will do as case testing let's say i will do create flight order create flight order uh, this is get flight order i 
I choose the wrong one. Create flight order. Create flight order. And these are the information I'll be sending. But there is a requirement. Now I'll be doing uh, edge case testing. Then let's say there is a requirement. Requirement is flight date must be at least 24 hours from current date. The flight date must be at least 24 hours from current date. So if you, if it is the requirement, then I have to first define the boundary. So I can define the two boundaries or three boundaries. I will define three boundaries. One, three boundaries. One is any date prior to the, this is one boundary. Another date, any date between uh, today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow, and another would be any date above, above tomorrow. So I have divided the input domains in, into three groups. First group is any date prior to today. Now I will define a specific test data. Any date prior to today means today is 30. So I can choose any date, let's say. 15, 15th of October. This is the test data I specified. Uh, well, no, this is, uh, there is a kind of co correction. This is A's case testing. This is not uh, equivalence partitioning testing. So I cannot choose this at that particular date. Uh, if it is equivalence partitioning testing, I would I could uh, choose 15. But since it is S case or boundary analysis testing or boundary testing, I cannot choose 15 days. So I have to choose. These are the groups. Any date prior today. Any date prior today. Since this, this group ends with any days prior today. This group ends with yesterday. Any days prior today means. Uh, 29th or any other day. So in this group, in this group, the boundary ends with 29. Boundary ends with 29. So I will be changing uh, 29th October. This is the upper boundary. Lower boundary is out of scope. Lower boundary is out of out of the scope out of the scope lower boundary and then this one this group any day between today and tomorrow so what is the range 30 and 31 so 30 and 31 this is the these are the two days in this range the first group ends with 29 and they starts with i do not know it could go way back uh, 10000 bc way back so that is uh, out of a scope and the ends with uh, 29 so in the first group and second group is uh, 30 and 31 30 and 31 so i will have lower boundary 30 so 30th october october and upper boundary 31 october october i have i'm a specific test data and then the, for this one any date above tomorrow. So what is tomorrow? 39. Any date above tom tomorrow starts with 1, ends with infinity. I do not know in the future where the uh, future will end. So uh, upper boundary is out of scope. Lower boundary is 1st of November. So I will be saying 1st November. 1st November. 1st November and uh, upper boundary is out of scope. So now I'm doing case testing. It is also known as boundary value analysis testing. Some people call boundary testing. 
So this is the requirement. I divided the input domains into three different groups and I specified the test data. Now I will execute and see how, how happens. Uh, now I will execute for this one. This one I will execute. This one I will execute. This one I will execute now. So that means I will try to create a flight order on this particular date. System should not allow me to uh, system will not be able to if I make if I make a request to API that hey API create an uh, order for me uh, and this date this is 29 actually 29 uh, this is any date prior today today is 30 30 ends with 29 it starts with uh, infinity I do not know maybe 10,000 BC so lower boundary and the upper boundary is 29 so 29th october now i will be i will execute this for this one so now i'm saying first class my name i'm giving imran departure date i will choose 29 i will choose yesterday 29 and the flight order uh flight order let's say i will be changing no i mean i need to give a flight number so i'll be giving this number one nine three nine five one nine three nine five one nine three nine five and i'm giving two tickets let's say one nine three nine five one nine three nine five one nine three nine five so now if i run it that means i'm sending request to api saying that hey api this is the information create an order for me flight order for me and api should say i can i will not be able to create an order because uh, the date is uh, yesterday and there should be at least uh, one day uh, at, at least 24 hours in the future at least uh, more than at, at least more than 24 hours in the future something like that uh, it will uh, it should respond if it if it responds like that then testing pass if it responds uh, that it created the it created the uh, order successfully then testing fails so now i'll be running it doesn't it doesn't matter with this uh, failure things i'll have to check uh, i'll have to check what is in the request uh, and response in the request i'm saying with i'm checking whether the request i sent that is correct or not so these are the information that i have given yesterday and in the response In the response it says a uh, flight should be at least 24 hours in the future so that means it, the system not system the api could not create an flight order for me i requested api that api create a flight order for me but api couldn't create the flight order for me and that is expected behavior so testing pass that is testing pass. So this one passes in this particular uh, particular uh, case. And then other one is any date between, uh, I could have divided into two groups where uh, this would, be, uh, but I, ha I have divided into three groups for, uh, for just safety. So the second group is, uh, any date between today and tomorrow in this range there are two dates only and i will be testing for both the dates and uh, system will not allow the api 
to create flight order for me. I will request API that, hey, API create flight order for me. Uh, these days I will, in one API call, I will ask API to create flight order uh, on it in, on, in, on 30th October or in another API call, I will ask API, uh, API to create a flight order in 31st October in this particular date. And both uh, calls or both requests, API should respond saying that uh, he couldn't create the flight order because uh, date has to be in the future, at least 24 hours. So I'll be running again. Now I'll be doing for this one. This one I'll be testing. If it doesn't allow me to, if uh, API fails to create an account for uh, me, then testing pass. So I will be changing the date to today. And I will run it. First, I will see what request I sent. This is the request I sent where the date is today. And API should not create account for me. And it passed. It says uh, API couldn't uh, create the account for me because a date has to be in the future. And then now I will go with this one. This one I will be testing. So I will uh, make another API call and ask API to create a flight order in this particular date, which is tomorrow. So I'll be changing the date to tomorrow and run it. If API doesn't create flight order for me, then testing pass. If it creates, then testing fail. This is manual testing, therefore this cross chain doesn't matter. I'm using API as client and doing manual testing. So I'm sending the request. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm checking what request I have sent. This is the request I have sent, the date is tomorrow. And the response I have received is, the API couldn't create a flight order for me. It says date has to be in the future. So testing passes in this group as well. In this group. Now this is uh, any date above uh, tomorrow any date above tomorrow that starts with the uh, first of November and ends with infinity. So this one out of scope, infinity is out of scope, uh, in scope is lower boundary, which is first November. So I will ask API to create flight order on first of November and see if, and it should allow me it uh, if uh, I will, uh, in this particular call, API call, I will ask API to create flight order uh, for me. Uh, well, the date is 1st November and uh, API should be able to create an order for me. If it if API creates an order for me, then testing pass. If API doesn't create an order for me, then testing fail. So I'll be choosing tomorrow, 1st of November. Now I'll be running. So now I'm doing for this one, 1st of November. This is what I'm... Uh, Testing, I'm asking API to create an order in this date, and API should be able to create order for me in this date. If it creates, then testing pass. If it doesn't create, then testing fail. So I'm going, I'm expanding, going here. 
first i will see what request i sent what request api received from me this is the letter i sent to api that uh, this is the information and date is tomorrow not tomorrow no day after tomorrow and uh, if uh, and ask api to create an order and let's see what api says API says it was able to create the order. The order number is 28 and the price 222. So this one also passes. That means this this is uh, this is what I have done. That is API testing that I have done. No, not API, uh, what I'm saying. This is what I done. That is uh, age case testing I've done. Functional testing and age case testing. So I'm doing manually functional testing and age case testing. So age case testing also done. So I have given this one also hands on. Now I will automate. Automate test scripts with parameterization. Automation means uh, I will be using this script. I will be using this script for multiple uh, iterations. So I delete this one. I will use another this this particular. I will be automating. I will be automating the testing, a particular testing uh, of this particular method. So this is the get flights method. Uh, get, get flight methods, I will be testing many different ways. Uh, uh, and uh, one particular testing I will automate. So that is, let's say if I choose uh, departure city none and arrival, arrival city then word then what happens in the response if i run the script now that means i am telling api that api create uh, an odd uh, um, if i run the script that means i'm sending a request to api saying that api give me all the flights which are uh, available or which uh, runs in these two particular locations so one is none other one is denver so none if it is uh, if the city is uh, null or no city is none is selected then what response api get uh, i mean what uh, response api gives to me let me check get flights this is the request i'm sending now i'm i will be showing this one with parameterization this is what i'll be showing so first i'm checking what request i sent the request i sent that uh, departure city null arrival city denver this is this is the letter whatever inside of envelope that is considered a letter so this is the letter uh, I sent to API as part of a request. And the response, in the response it says, please specify both the departure and arrival destinations. Now this is the, uh, this is the, error message or this is the fault tag I'm receiving. This is the fault tag I'm receiving. In uh, API, API uses fault tag to tell me any errors. So this is the fault tag uh, I'm expecting and this fault tag I'm expecting. And I'm expecting for all scenarios. Now if I choose uh, Franklin then also I'm expecting that uh, I want to put a I want to put a checkpoint. Uh, let me open. Let me let me open the response again. This is the response, and I am expecting that this response will go for. Uh, all the scenarios.
So I will be putting one checkpoint. Checkpoint means uh, the UFT tool will check um, the information I told UFT that that will appear in the response, whether that appears in the response or not, that, uh, that UFT will check. So fault is expected. Fault if if a ULT fault. This is the tag. The fault tag is ends here. It start here. This is the fault tag. It starts here. Ends here. Everything in between is the content, and the entire thing is a element of XML document. So I'm expecting this fault. Fault has these things. Fault code. Fault code. Fault code is a clone a client. This is what I'm expecting. So I'm copy this, uh, putting here. That means I'm telling UFT that when uh, API will send me response, you will check in the respond uh, fault tag is present or not. If fault tag is present, then check a default code value is a clone client or not. That is what I'm uh, telling UFT for now. So another checkpoint I want to put that is fault string. Fault string. So this is the tag name. This is the attribute, and this is the content. So this is the content. Uh, is the value of fault string. This fault string tag has this value. So I'll be copying this and paste it here. So putting this checkpoint, this to checkpoint, uh, means I'm telling API, I'm telling UFT, not API, I'm telling UFT that UFT, when API send a respond, check in the respond, fault tag is present or not. This particular fault tag is present or not. If present, if not present, then tell that uh, testing failed. If present, then check if uh, Fault code, fault code, fault code uh, value is is clone client or not. If this value is something else, then also fail. Then also tell that testing fail. And then check uh, fault string. This particular uh, tag, its value is this one. Error clone, please specify both the departure and arrival destinations. And then a uh, clone symbol. If uh, this and uh, and check if this particular tag has this value or not. If this value is present, then testing pass. If uh, some other value is present, uh, then testing fail. So this is the checkpoint I put. Now if I run the script, so this is the checkpoint I put. Now I choose uh, departure city as none, arrival city, this one. And I also put checkpoint. Checkpoint, I said uh, this uh, response, I'm expecting fault tag to be present. And instead of the fault tag, this two tag will be present and this two tag should have this value. Now if I run the script and see what happens. Now if I go to this particular response, first I will check the request, what request API received from me. This is the request API received and let me check what response API gave me. This is the response uh, API gave me and I was checking, I will be checking the checkpoint of UFT, what UFT checked. You have to check that uh, the checkpoint I put that uh, passes. Actual uh, fault was present, the tag was present, and the value I was, this is actual value, this is expected value, this one also passes. This is uh, actual value, and this one also expected value, this is this checkpoint also passes. Now that I 
if you go to input now if i change value to third one this is franklin now i will be choosing london if i run it then what happens in the response uh, i will see the same context If I go to the response, in the response, I will see the same context. If I go to the checkpoint, I will see the same thing happen. Our checkpoint passes. Now, these things I will have to do how many times? If I select this, uh, if I select this uh, method again, and uh, I choose here, so how many times I will have to do? I tested three times already, one for with Denver, one for, with uh, Franklin, one with London, and I have to do oh, that many times. So I do not want to do that many times manually, one by one. I will be parameterized. I will uh, parameterize this. So I have one Excel file. I have one Excel file. This is the name of the Excel file. It has uh, these two column. B column, C column has uh, this uh, data. So I will be using this Excel file and parameterize so that a script, uh, so that a script will, uh, in first iteration, a script will take this two value. In second iteration, a script will take this two value. In third iteration, a script will take this value. So one, two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i will ask a script to run 10 times each time a script will take different sets of data this is one set this is another set this is another set different sets of data so first i will load the excel file here I'm choosing this file. Okay. It came up here. Now I can link again. If I arrival city is null. Okay. Can you this is one. Now I'm choosing, this is the thing. Arrival city is null, departure city has value. If I select here, arrival city is null, departure city has value. So now I will be choosing this two column. So this is departure city, departure city, this column I'll be choosing. So I'll be clicking on right, but on that link and data source excel file and then departure city so departure city okay so i have selected this column now for arrival city i will be selecting this column so i will be clicking on that uh, link symbol and this one is already selected this one already selected now i will be choosing arrival city this is arrival city arrival city i'm choosing and click on ok so let me see what i have selected one is departure city departure city arrival city arrival city now i selected this column this column and this column now i'll tell uh, uft to run this script 10 times so i'll be selecting the test flow and uh, test flow and uh, for loops, I will say run 10 times. 10 times. So I'm saving the script. Now a script will run 10 times. Each time it will take one different row of data. On different sets of data from uh, in each iteration. And each row is called a set of data. So in first iteration, it will take this row's data. In second iteration, it will take this row's data. In the third iteration, it will take this row's data. So now let me run it and see what happens.
Now, if I expand it, I will see a script has been run 10 times. Therefore, there are 10 iterations, iteration 10, iteration 9, iteration 8. So if I go to the iteration 10, if I go to the iteration 10, iteration 10 means it should select, you know, iteration 10 means, let me open the Excel file again. Iteration 10 means it should select uh, this two value in the request. This is iteration 10. So I'll be checking in the response what is sending. So it uh, choose do rich and null. That is what I was expecting. And then uh, this is iteration 9. Iteration 9, it should uh, choose uh, none and Sydney. Let me go to iteration 9. This is the iteration 9. This is the method of iteration 9. Now, if I go and in the request, I see it choose uh, none and Sydney. None and Sydney, that is what expecting, and then iteration. Uh, this is 10, 9, this one 8. In iteration 8, it will uh, choose none and settle. None and settle. Let me see. In iteration 10, this is the method. If I go and see what request has been sent, let me none and settle. None and settle. And uh, again, for the, let's say third one. This is the third one. One, two, three. Third one. One to third iteration, it will select uh, none and London. Let me see. Uh, this is the third iteration. Third iteration. This is the method that belongs to third iteration. And if we click on request, it will say none and London. And the response is same for all this same response. Response is, it will, uh, in the response, there will be a fault tag. This is the fault tag. It uh, And I put checkpoint uh, for uh, checking if the fault tag is present or not in the response. Then, and uh, this one also, this particular uh, tag with this particular value is present or not, this particular tag with this particular value is present or not, that I put in the checkpoint and in all the responses, these three, these things came up. That means um, testing for all those iterations, all those values has been tested through automation scripts. So this one I can call the automation testing with parameterization because I use this parameterization feature. So this is, uh, so I have given uh, how we can automate a test script with, with parameterization. So I have explained everything. I have explained everything which was uh, meant to demonstrate in this tutorial video. So I have explained everything. So I have one question for you. That is, let's say I am working I am in a company, ABC, I'm in a company, ABC, working as a QA, and I use API of another company to collect data from the other company. So I use API of another company to collect data from the other company, and then use those data to prepare test data during testing apps of our company. Now, does using API of another company to collect data is considered API testing? That is my question. Is that uh, using API to collect data from another testing so that those data I can use in testing of our applications in our company? Using that API is called API testing uh, because the data I'm using from that API call that I am eventually using for testing purpose of our testing applications, our applications. Uh, so is that called, is using that uh, API called API testing or not? That is my question. To my, That is my concern or question to you. 
So this is my name, MD Shahajida Imran. I also have a nickname that is Lemon. So that is all for this tutorial video. Thank you for watching this uh, tutorial video.